Welcome to Tech Webcast, Australia's leading technology show. Download our iPhone app www.techwebcast.info Welcome to episode 127 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 21st of May 2011. Today's hosts are Brad and Jason with Sam and special guest Chris from Zaidu. How are you doing, Brad? Jason, how are you, mate? Good, mate. How's your week been? I'm bring, uh, good, dude. Good. Good. We did, That's uh, excellent. We news. did another episode yesterday. Did you hear it? Uh, not yet. No, been pretty busy, but I uh, believe Dylan was on. Yeah, he was. He's a, he's a funny character, that one. Yes. <laughs> Very funny. He was on that, the show one other time we had him on an interview. Yeah, yeah, he came on, take, took over the old podcast. Steve was on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Steve, what do you reckon of it, mate? It was a pretty fun, wasn't it? Having you on. Oh, yeah, that was uh, definitely a funny show. And uh, Steve's, where are you from, Steve? Just give a, give a quick uh, uh, feedback on people. Uh, I'm in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, USA. Right. And you also do a live show each week called Chatterbox yeah. Live. Twice a week. Good stuff. Check that out, people, on uh, Justin TV. Uh, Jason, any news, mate? What's been going on with your week, mate? Any stuff been happening? Um, mostly reading up on uh, programming stuff and uh, not a lot of other interesting things happening, except I got shaped this week. Oh, that sucks. I, down, I uh, set up a new PC, well, upgraded a PC for a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. And, of course, Windows, you know, has a million updates for, you know, six billion gigs. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Office 2010, and that had a bunch of updates. And then... Uh, I downloaded the uh, iPhone uh, SDK, which is another f- nearly four and a half gigs, so quickly went over my peak quota. So I'm actually investigating, and I found a uh, Chrome plugin that will let me um, schedule downloads for later in the night. <laughs> oh, okay. So that, that kind of thing can start at like two o'clock in the morning and get it all downloaded in my 70 gig off peak instead of uh, sucking down my 30 gig peak time. What's that like having that usage at, in the, at that time of the day, like having off-peak and on-peak? Is that good or bad? Um, well, I suppose it's all right because uh, on the weekends I can uh, still do uh, higher speeds until about 9 a.m. because it's 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the off-peak. Mm. So if I'm awake at 6.30, 7 o'clock, I've still got a couple of hours I can use on uh, faster speed. But uh, once it hits 9 o'clock, everything slows down. So shaped at 256K up and down, but it uh, doesn't seem to be affecting my... Uh, live streaming today. Oh, well, that's good. Good on you. Yeah. Also, we have uh, Sam. What's up, Sam? Nothing much. Welcome to Tech Webcast. First time ever. You're actually on John's podcast the other day, mate. Good job, by the way. Yeah, thanks. And um, also, we have Chris from Exido.com. What's up, Chris? Hey, Sam, old guys. It's all right, mate. <laughs> um, what, is, what is the website? What is it about? What is it? Yeah, Zaidu is a uh, it's a social discovery and um, kind of news aggregation engine. It's kind of like the Dig or Reddit, but like 3.0. Cool, man. And who's involved with it? Who who's, who started it all up? Okay, so our our two founders are uh, we got Eric Roach. He uh, he's basically the guy behind internet stock trading. Um, and Cameron Brain. This is his uh, third web startup. So we've got a. Well, We've got a pretty all-star uh, founder team. Good stuff. All right. Well, I'll, I'll throw it over to Jason. He's got some pretty mad questions to ask you, so go ahead, Jason. <laughs> uh, when did you uh, get started with your Zydo? Was it Zydo? Um, Zydo. Uh, yeah. People say it both ways. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, uh, you, you know, in one form or another, it's been around for over a year, probably about 14 months now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it runs off uh, PHP MySQL. Pardon me. It runs off PHP MySQL server. You know, I don't actually know. We've got a whole team of backend guys that do all That's that. The technical and, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. one of the tech guys. Sorry. <laughs> so for for the um, people who don't know these kind of sites, uh, you have sort of crowdsourcing interesting news, and uh, people will post a link to an interesting website, and if you follow those people or you're interested in them, then you can see what news they're uh, posting that people think are interesting. That about sums it up. Uh, you know, that's about it. That You know, the great thing about Zydu is that you can really drill down. Like, if, if you want to do what you just described and, uh, you know, see just what people you follow are posting, you can do that. 
Um, if you want to go down further and just see what one person is posting, you can follow that. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, you can go all the way back out and look at the entire Zaidu network, which is like, you know, we've got over a million and a half contributing sources that we or contributors that we use right now. Um, you know, so when you when you zone out to the all Zaidu page, um, you know, you're looking at a, a really broad spectrum of news that's coming from a you know a million and a half different recommendations. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, do you have a lot of uh, celebrity, internet celebrity type people uh, joined on there that post interesting things as well? Are they promoting themselves, or do they just uh, post other things they're interested in? How does that work? Well, you know, the the great thing about Zaidu is you don't have to post it to the site, right? If you want to go onto Reddit, you've got to go actually give them the link. Um, what we're doing is we're actually just taking the links out of people's Twitter feeds. Mm-hmm. Um, so so we've got articles submitted by. You know Arnold Schwarzenegger on Zaidu, and mm-hmm. you know he's he's never actually been on the site, but he's actually you know touched that article. He's actually recommended it, um, and we go out and pick that up. So yeah, we've got I mean we've got content recommended by you know almost anyone you can imagine on the site. So you're just uh, crea- curating uh, links from various people. How do you uh, pick what sort of car- uh, category? It goes into do you analyze the type of keywords in the uh, website that's linked to? Mm-hmm. We, uh, you know, there's there's certain sources, right? A lot of tech blogs they only post stuff about technology, so we can just throw that into the technology subject. Uh, but for, you know, uh, for Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger and such, uh, he doesn't really have one set category, does he? Unless it's uh, acting as a tough guy <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. a senator yeah. or a uh, governor. Yeah, he's in the tough guy turned politician subject. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looks no, like- we. Uh, so and then and then we do a, we do a little bit of like analysis. Um, you know, there's a lot of sources that aren't, you know, uh, kind of pure play subjects. So we, uh, yeah, we do a little analysis on them to kind of distribute things. Ah, that sounds interesting. I heard one of the other guys uh, with a question. Yes, yeah, Dave, got a, you got a question for Chris? Oh, um, uh, yeah, kind of. Um, I noticed when I first went to the site, it looks like totally different uh, compared to other sites. Um, uh, I. I the way you described it was kind of interesting. It was, you know, social networking uh, and uh, with different subjects. Uh, so I'm, I'm still kind of going around the website, uh, seeing the uh, different functions. I also see a video um, section. I don't know if you can watch the video within that website or it just uh, gives you a link to, to the video. But uh, You know, whenever we're, av- whenever we're able to, uh, we'll actually just embed the video as I do. Um, you know what we're doing is we're taking we're taking content from public RSS feeds, um, and if we can, we'll just display it in the site. Um, if we can't, we give you a link and we send you back out. But um, yeah, actually, on video, we've been making some changes to the way that um, you actually view the content on the site. As of now, you know you you click a link and it'll bring you um, to the source in in a new window or a new tab. Um, I actually haven't clicked on movies. Yeah, movies will actually take you to the same one. If you click the discuss link on the bottom, it'll actually just open it in a Zidu window and uh, embed the video. Oh, okay, embedding, yeah. I didn't think about that too, so. Okay, so uh, Chris, what's the difference between uh, this side and Dig and, and 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 the other side to this one? What's the difference? Uh-huh. Well, the I think, you know, for me, the main difference um uh, is that you know Zaidu has a thousand subjects right now. Yeah. So you know if if I'm into like paragliding and kiteboarding and politics and gourmet food and photography, you know, I can I can follow all of those things individually and separately in Zaidu. Okay. Um, cool. You know if I'm on if I'm on Reddit I can drill down to you know subreddits but you know they're they're a little limited in scope. Yep. Um, the the main difference I think for most users is that. The the social um, endorsement of the articles and the content on Zaidu, it's not happening on Zaidu. It's happening on Facebook and Twitter and other uh, you know social sites, and we're using their APIs uh, to analyze the popularity of the content. Um, so so generally, um, you know, I th- think you get I think you get just a, a richer experience on Zaidu. Um, you know, I, I've noticed that Dig and Reddit they kind of they kind of almost have like this hyperbole to them, right? There's kind of this 
like Reddit culture, right? And you have all these Redditors yeah. that kind of have the same taste and, and the same kind of stuff floats up to the top. Um, you know, side we're pulling over a million and a half contributors. Uh, so you get a, a broader spectrum of uh, content and a kind of a richer drill down when you actually dig into, say, health or diabetes or travel. Okay. And um, I seen uh, Robert Scoble interview you guys. How was that? Uh, it, it was uh, it was it was really cool to watch. Uh, Cameron and Eric were both really excited to do the interview, and uh, we, we got a ton of uh, we got a ton of traffic from it. Good stuff. Um, yeah, we were really excited for that. That's how we came across the site because uh, Robert Scoble uh, interviewed you guys. That's how we came across the website. That's oh, cool. how we got onto you, and uh, yeah. we wanted to chat to you too. Well, thanks, so, <laughs> so yeah. So what what's your role in the uh, in the website and stuff? Yeah, um, I've uh, I've been with Zaidu for about a year. I was an intern last summer. Uh, I did some part time stuff while I was finishing up school this year. Uh, now I, this is actually my first week uh, full time with them. I'm super stoked on it. Cool. Um, I do uh, community management. Uh, you know, kind of building the communities from within, uh, and then I'm kind of doing a lot of marketing stuff. So inbound marketing. Um, you know, kind of funnel analysis, a lot of that kind of stuff. Good stuff. All right. Jason, any questions for Chris? Do you have uh, any categories that are really popular? Do you find a lot of people that are technology-type uh, people, or uh, do you have, a, like, a wider range of uh, members who are interested in uh, everything? Um, you know, at the moment, it's there's a lot of, you know, it's just kind of the nature of, like, early adopters on the site, right, is uh, startups, technology, um politics, uh, venture capital are all, you know, really popular subjects. Um, but it, you know, it's surprising to, uh, you know, follow people on the site. So you can, you can follow someone on Zydeo and, and see what they've recommended and what they're into. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see kind of some of the just off the wall things, you know, people are into like, you know, foodie people follow like the foodie subject or, um, you know, diabetes, photography, whatever, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, for the most part, we're seeing probably the most traffic in kind of tech early adopter things. Cool, man. So you reckon there'll be an iPhone app or an iPad app coming out for this sort of thing or, um, you know, kind of mobile developments on the horizon, but it's not a priority right now. Um, kind of how the, this a, idea. Uh, how about a theme that automatically resizes for mobile devices? you know, short-term kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in whatever form it happens, mobile's still kind of on the horizon for us. Um, kind of the, the core competency right now, and what we're really trying to build is, you know, a great user experience online. Um, and, and, you know, when that, when that moves to mobile, I don't know, uh, but it is on the horizon for us. Cool. So you've got a bit of a roadmap there. Do you have any other uh, interesting uh, new features coming out uh, anytime in the near future? Um, yeah, we do, actually. I don't know that I'm allowed to talk about them. <laughs> of course you are. That's why we've got you here. Can, we, <laughs> can you give us we a small... We won't tell anyone it's all right. Can you give you us can... like a small hint on, on what it is, like an excuse, exclusive for Tech Webcast? Oh, an, an exclusive for Tech. Webcast. That's an Let me see. Tech webcast exclusive here. No, I'm I'm gonna have to hold off, guys. Sorry. Right. We actually we do we do a push like every week. So you know if you're on the site, you'll notice you know on the on the homepage here you've got these um these kind of gray bars that turn blue when you roll over them. Okay. Um, this was actually like a major reformatting of the site that we did on uh, Monday or Tuesday. Um, so there, there's you know there's usually something new about every week on the site. Cool. All right, sounds good, mate. Um, all right, anything else you want to add before you go, Chris? Because you, cause I know you have to go somewhere and stuff and that sort of thing. And um, no, thanks for having me on, guys. All good, uh, mate. All good. Yeah. Happy to come back anytime to discuss more features about the website and stuff and that sort of thing. Cool. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys be the first to know for our next uh, release. How about that? All right, we'll That'll do. Be our exclusive. <laughs> sure thing. Yeah. Now, uh, Steve or Jason or Sam, any last questions before Chris goes? I uh, know that's it for me. Yep. Uh, Sam or Steve? Oh, uh, no. I'm good. You're good, Steve. All right. What about you, Sam? Any questions, mate? No, no questions. All right. It's very interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. It's very good. Very good talking to you, mate. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good weekend.
Thanks, you too. Thank you. Let's move on to the news. Jason, what's been happening in the news, mate? Well, for starters, I seem to survive the rapture. How about yourself? Today was supposed to be the end of the world. Oh, let's not talk about that. That's just, that's just bullshit. <laughs> All right. Did you know that an app store is not a store for apps? Yes, don't be fooled. Apple warns the phrase app store is not generic and can only be used to describe the Cupertino's um, app store. Apple denies that based on the common meaning, the words app store together donate a store for apps. Apple said it in a Thursday filing with California District Court. Apple has been fighting several tech giants on this point lately. In March, Apple sued Amazon over its Amazon App Store, arguing that Apple has exclusive rights to the phrase because of its iTunes App Store. Apple has targeted Microsoft on similar grounds. Last month, Amazon responded to the suit, arguing that the term App Store is generic and that Apple should not be allowed to use it exclusively. Apple, Amazon cited the American Dialect Society, which recently voted App as the word of the year in 2010, noting that although the word has been around for ages, it really exploded in the last 12 months, with the arrival of app stores for a wide spectrum of operating systems or for phones and computers. Indeed, the words app store are commonly used among many businesses in the app store market, Amazon argued. Apple is not buying it, at least not publicly. Apple denies that the words app store are common used terms among many businesses to describe mobile software download services and further denies that the term app store market is used to describe the market for mobile software download services the company reiterated in response to Amazon's filing. Amazon and Apple do not operate an app store, Apple argued. Apple asked the court to dismiss Amazon's counterclaim. The tech community is not about to give up its fight for App Store, however. Last week, Microsoft, HTC, Nokia and Sony Ericsson teamed up and asked European officials to invalidate Apple's App Store and App Store trademarks. The four companies filed separate requests with the Office for Harmonization in the Internal Market, a trademark organization based in Alicante, Spain. Though OHIM, Apple has, through OHIM, Apple has successfully trademarked the terms App Store and App Store joined together. But Microsoft, HTC, Nokia, and Sony Ericsson want Erhim to reverse its decision because the trademark lacks distinctiveness. This, of course, begs the question, if Apple wins the fight, what should Amazon, Microsoft, and the others be calling their non-app stores? As further proof of how digital media to dominate today's entertainment, Amazon announced Thursday that its customers now buy more e-books for its Kindle device than all print books, hardcover, and paperback combined. Given that people seem to spend more and more of their time peering at glowing electronic streams, this was probably bound to happen. Still, the swiftness of this sea change three and a half years after the Kindle hit the market appeared to catch even Amazon by surprise. Customers are now choosing Kindle books more often than print books. We had high hopes that this would happen eventually, but we never imagined it would happen this quickly. We've been selling print books for 15 years and Kindle books for less than four years, said Jeff Bezos, Amazon's CEO, in a statement. Amazon introduced the Kindle e-reader in November 2007. By July 2010, Kindle book sales had surpassed hardcover book sales, and six months later, Kindle books overtook paperbacks to books to become the most popular format on Amazon.com, the online retailer said. Of course, these stats only represent sales of books on Amazon.com, the place, only place consumers can buy e-books for the Kindle. When sales of books from other websites and brick and mortar stores are factored in, ebooks still re- represent a small minority of all titles purchased, although some analysts predict they could reach 20% within a year or two. The growth of electronic books has been a bright spot in an otherwise struggling publishing industry. Sales revenue from ebooks were up 145.7% in March of this year compared with March 2010. And according to the Association of American Publishers, at the same time, adult hardcover sales increased 6% while mass market books, less expensive paperbacks, grew by 1.2%. Consumers wanting to read books electronically can now choose from many competing devices, including Sony's Reader, Barnes & Noble's Nook, and a variety of touchscreen tablets, including Apple's iPad. Do you read uh, any books or that sort of thing on your uh, iPad, Brad? No, not really. No? no, I would. Uh, I tell you what, I would read a lot more stuff on my Kindle app on my iPad if the books that I wanted to read were available. But of course, they're not available in Australia because most of the stuff what there sort of, is uh, US only. What sort of books do you read, Bullock? I would be reading uh, technology books, um, any fantasy type thing like Lord of the Ring kind of style. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are US only. Yeah, so I would sucks. like to read Daniel Suarez's new book, Freedom. Well, not new, but newer than his first one, which I read in paperback. 
but it's not available in Australia. So oh, okay. I can't read it through there and I can't buy it. Amazon's lo- losing out on a lot of money due to uh, country regional uh, lockouts for people outside of the US. Mm. What about Steve? So, what about Steve? Hang on before you go. What, yeah. what about oh. Steve? Steve, do you read books? Um, you know, I used to be a really big book reader. Now it's more newspapers and uh, occasional magazines. Yeah. Um, I, if for myself, I kind of prefer the, the old school method with the paperback. Um, but, uh, you know, th- there's certain times I would do it electronically. Yeah, true, true. All right, let's move on. Sony hacked again, used to host a phishing site. With anonymous denial of service attacks and then the twin hacks of PlayStation Network and Sony Online Entertainment, Sony's online infrastructure has been taking a battering over the last few weeks, and it's not over yet. Another successful hack against the company is being reported by security firm F-Secure. A web server used to host Sony's Thai site has been broken into and is now being used to host a phishing site that targets customers of an Italian credit card company. Unlike the PSN and SOE break-ins, this hack is not likely to have any serious consequences. It should be restricted to a relatively unimportant web server that has no access to sensitive customer information. Still, it shows that Sony's online troubles aren't over yet and that the entire company needs to take online security more seriously. It's just getting ridiculous now, isn't it? Is it is getting crazy. Sony's become this great big internet joke yep. of their security, of which they apparently have none. Mm. What's going Not on there, right. Sony? What's I'll all be buying money being Sony. spent of that they're, they're making from all their products? Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to be buying the uh, mining their pockets and mm. their bank accounts, but uh, that's about it. Yeah, I won't be buying any Sony products anytime soon. I know that. After what no, you I've got an Xbox, and I'm glad of that. <laughs> exactly same. And Microsoft's always been the one people been worried about security, particularly with Windows and such. But uh, nobody's breaking into the Xbox uh, online network, are they? No. No, no, no. I think Sony. Sony makes wonderful products, but it's their other, you know, their their data. I guess they got to worry about. Yeah, the infrastructure is not that great. Is uh, is it up again in Australia? Does anyone know? I think yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it is. PSN was coming back up. In yeah, the last you week. reported on it down the other day on his blog, saying it's all back and stuff. Right. Let's hope they can keep it going. This yeah. Time. Good luck, Sony. Yeah, good luck, Sony. We're on your side, honest. Not <laughs> apples. <laughs> battle against fast-breeding mm. Mac Defender Trojan just took an interesting turn. According to a May 16 internal memo obtained by ZDNet security researcher Ed Bott, Apple is instructing its Apple Care support representative to essentially avoid the entire issue of Mac Defender, a Trojan that has plagued Mac users for nearly three weeks by posing as legitimate antivirus software and urging users to download it. Apple Care does not provide support for removal of the malware. You should not confirm or deny whether the customer's Mac is infected or not, the memo reads. If callers say that Mac Defender warning has shown up on their computer but they haven't installed it, Apple's policy, the memo outlines, is to direct callers to quit the installer and delete the software immediately. However, if a customer has already installed the fraudulent program, Apple Care reps are instructed to not attempt to remove or uninstall any malware software and instead direct callers to the Apple online store and the Mac App Store to purchase antivirus software. The memo also instructs Apple Care staff to direct callers to the What is Malware document under the Help button on the computer's Finder feature. The memo explicitly orders staff, support staff to explain that Apple does not make recommendations for specific software to assist in removing malware. This internal memo could frustrate Mac users, a growing number of whom are falling victim to Mac Defender, which not only requests passwords and payments to eradicate a non-existing problem, but also, in some cases, asks users to takes users to porn sites until they comply. Oh. Now, again, they have to start worrying about it on the Mac, but still, it doesn't hack into your computer and just appear there or infect it. You have to actually install it yourself. So uh, they're still one step ahead of Microsoft in that. But uh, if you see something comes up and asks for your admin password, you might just type it in and bang, you've got yourself malware now. Mm. It's had to happen once uh, Apple starts getting popular and their OS is on more computers around. The hackers and uh, malware people are going to start targeting it more and more, I think. Yeah, true. I think it's more of a phishing attack where, um, you know, it, you have to get user input yeah. um, rather than, you know, it sneaks in without you knowing about it. That's right. That's right. Mm. So, uh, but there's a lot of people who still don't understand. They think, well, my Mac is secure, so I'm not going to get a malware. This has popped up something wants to install, so I better click on yes. So, so you reckon, Jason, that uh, the Mac users will get viruses? Oh, eventually it's got to happen. It wow. uh, happens everywhere. 
but uh, it was always just a matter of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. If you're not based in the UK, you may have no idea what super injunction is, but if you're a Brit, they're apparently an occasional part of daily life, especially as of late. And now an anonymous Twitter user is being sued for breaking a super injunction issued by a British judge, but over who or what, nobody knows for sure, and it's because of the super injunction. Talk of social media injunctions in the UK began earlier this month when a British judge attempted to protect the identity of a brain-damaged woman by ordering her name to stay off Twitter and Facebook. The two sites were actually included in a list of media forbidden from publishing information, according to the order as seen by Reuters, despite the fact that both companies are US-based and the content they host is entirely user-generated. But that's just a regular type of injunction. There's also a con concept called super-injunction. While an injunction simply bars a specific aspect of the story from being discussed, a super-injunction is super because it bars any element of the story from being discussed at all. So if a celebrity has an affair with a pool boy's dog and <laughs> somehow manages to get a super injunction from a judge, the mere discussion of any of it, the celebrity herself, the pool boy's clothing that day, the breed of the dog, whether the celebrity had a relationship with the pool boy before moving onto the dog, etc., is not allowed. In fact, celebrity cover-ups appear to be a primary reason for super injunctions lately. Early this month, an anonymous Twitter user listed a number of actors, TV personalities, athletes, and other celebrities who allegedly obtained super injunctions in order to keep details about their lives secret. According to Financial Times, the High Court has handed out at least 30 of these super injunctions to the rich and famous, though Prime Minister David Cameron is reportedly uneasy about the practice. And there's some... Uh, there's probably a story we could have done without if I had read it first properly before reading it out. But there you go. Interesting inf insight into the UK. <laughs> oh well, we people in the UK and uh... it's got it's got Twitter in it and Reuters, so it must be uh, news that we can talk about, right? Yeah, that's it for the news for the day. Yeah, hopefully, no more stories like that next week. <laughs> um, all right. So, what else, Jason, has been happening? Uh, Steve, you're from Ch Chatterbox. Um, let's uh, you chatted with me yesterday about this your internet. Um, yeah. What's going down um, with it, mate? What's going on? What, what happened? Uh. Well, you know, of course, with my my cable modem provider, they're, they they brought it over from another company, and uh, so you know, supposedly they're going to upgrade it, and it's been a long time. So I figure, well, let me bring in a, net, a second internet line uh, from a different company, which worked. Um, I'm getting great connections and everything. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't let me um, stream. I did some test streams. Uh, uh, it, it acted like it was streaming, but you know, no video or audio, hardly. So um, I went to uh, G Tech, and uh, it, it looks like it might be. Uh, they're going to try to get me to connect um, using a router, and then they give me, uh, you know, some DNS addresses and stuff. I have to uh, input manually. Uh, I'm not saying it's per se it's really G Tech. Uh, it could be a routing the way it's being routed, or. Um, perhaps uh, J uh, Justin TV doesn't like uh, the way um, G Tech servers are doing it, so it could be a couple of different issues. But hopefully, you can get it sorted out. Yeah, hopefully, I'm paying uh, extra, so <laughs> hopefully, I can get it fixed. <laughs> yeah, are you sure. able to get a refund or anything for the time it's not working? Um, well, I mean, I'm getting full access to the internet, so it's not like um, it's just a specific issue with. Um, this, these video streaming sites, I even tried um, Ustream, it didn't work, mm -hmm. which is very strange because, I mean, uh, Skype works and everything else. It's just, you know, uh, that one uh, specific issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. What about you, Sam? What do you do on the internet before we go? Just, uh, you run a radio well, station or something, don't, don't you, mate? I'm part of a host. I'm a host on a radio station on the internet. What's that called? Cos Harbour Geek Radio, the name of it is. Okay. And that's live 24-7, is it, or something, is it? Yeah, it's live 24-7, but we've been having some downtime at the moment because our provider, like, is not happy or some something happened. Right. Something yeah. with the servers happened. Okay. Cos Harbour's a great place. I'm from Tari originally, so I've been up through there a lot of times. Yeah, Cross Harbour's yeah, a good place big to go. Banana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good place, Cross Harbour. It's a good, good area, that, isn't it? Good yeah. holiday place. Yeah, good area. Yep. All right, so any last words, Jason, before we go, mate? Where can they find you on the internet? Anything you want to add in here before we go, mate? 
Yeah, they can find me at jasonoakley.me website or uh, on Twitter, W-A-U-L-O-K, Warlock. And, and Brad? Uh, yep, uh, Tech Webcast and on Facebook, uh, Tech Webcast. And Sam, we're going to find you. Find you on the internet. Um, at Twitter. They can find me on Twitter at SamFTY, S-A-M-F-T-Y. They can find me. Okay, and Steve? Uh, yeah, you can find me on uh, Justin TV forward slash Lennox Cool Dude. Uh, I have a show, Chatterbox Live, and I'm broadcasting tomorrow. Oh, good stuff. What's going to be on tomorrow, man? Uh, this is probably just going to be open chat, whatever. Um, usually the, the interesting stuff is on Wednesday. Yeah, you, you actually had a guest on the other day, didn't you? Uh, guest? Yeah, Mr. Bit 10 from YouTube. Okay, cool. Good stuff. So anyone can uh, ring in and have a chat about technology? Uh, yeah, anybody. Yeah, anybody anyone. or every. Oh, a lot of times on Saturday, it, it turns up technology anyway, so <laughs> it's Wait, all good. Get on to it, everyone. Go check it out and tell us what you think about it. Mm. Yeah. I love I love our chatterbox. It's good. I'll have to try and have a look myself. Yeah, shade it. <laughs> <laughs> Your yeah. viewership is very much appreciated. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, this has been episode one twenty seven. Jason, thanks, mate. Yeah, no worries. Um, you need to say episode one twenty seven at the start, didn't you? Oh, no, yeah, you did. yeah, you did. that's good. Um, and Sam, thanks, mate, for being on. That's right. And uh, Steve, thanks. As always, for being on, mate, come back any time. Your Thanks input, a lot. Your input's uh, very good to us. And, uh, and Everyone go have a look at zaidu.com. Yeah, go check that, that website. And thanks to Chris for coming on. Yeah. And, uh, and also this uh, episode's going to be replayed on Thursday night on the aussietechheads.com.au, I think. I'll have to awesome. remember to watch it. I forgot last week. Yeah. So it's aussietechheads.com.au. That's a quick plug for them. They yeah. go live every uh, Thursday night. Great bunch of guys. Yeah, great guys. Glenn was a legend. He's a funny dude. And, uh, and uh, I hope he plays episode 126. I'm not sure which one he'll play. This one or, I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he, could, he could play half and half. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 You're listening you lost the game. Another one of the fine yeah, members the of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Find more of the member shows over at techpodcasts.com. Tech Webcast. Streamed from our brains to our mouths to your ears to your brain. It's like our brains are holding hands. Brain hands. That doesn't really make sense, but Tech Webcast does. Tech stuff, gadgets, games. Come and wander around geek heaven with us. Tech Webcast, here, now, holding brain hands.